Well, bring a, a beginning the bulletin with a breaking news that is coming in uh, as of now from uh, the Tribhuvan International Airport in Kathmandu. It has, in fact, been closed due to heavy rains and thunderstorms, and there is more bad news in store for the Himalayan nation. The meteorological department has uh, predicted 48 hours of pure misery as rains and thunderstorms are expected to lash Nepal. It will cause problems as far as the rescue is concerned, and Preeti, it seems that uh, this is going to make the a lot of uh, difficulty not only for the rescuers but right. also many people those will be spending nights out in open due to the fear of aftershocks. you know what reports we're getting now ankit and they're rather disturbing because now avalanches the the risk of avalanche especially at the everest base camp which is already the south side especially devastated uh, well that has increased uh, you know i want to apprise our viewers on the latest death count it's no longer 200 and uh, 2250 Sadly, the numbers are rising and we are counting and they're rising very fast. The latest count is 2,352, while those of the injured have gone down to 6,239. And inclement weather over the next two days is only going to make things worse. All right, let's quickly apprise our viewers on the latest development that is coming in and it doesn't look good. Uh, the IMD has predicted really bad weather over the course of the next 48 hours and it's crucial. This time is crucial uh, if it is lost. Uh, reports coming in, the Kathmandu airport has now shut down due to heavy rain and thunderstorm. Uh, more bad news coming in for the Himalayan nation which is already grappling, struggling, uh, you know, brought down to its knees by this calamity. I want to cut across to Gaurav Savant. He's getting us the very latest. You know, Gaurav, these 48 hours were so important and now with the Met Department predicting more misery in terms of rain and thunderstorm in the next 48 hours, where does it leave rescue operations? You know, what we're getting in, the Kathmandu airstrip, closed now. The Trivuan International Airport has temporarily been shut down uh, because of this rain, uh, but the aircraft that are flying in at this point of time, uh, whether it's the C-17 or the C-130 Hercules, uh, they are able to fly in difficult circumstances. So the moment the weather lifts, even if it lifts a little, uh, gives a little window, these aircraft will go in, uh, pump in more relief and uh, uh, material that, that, that is needed to be pumped in. But you're absolutely right, relief and rescue operations will be hampered because now is the time that helicopter operations become extremely crucial. Every minute matters. And this is where relief material has to be taken to different parts of Nepal. So for that, you need medium lift helicopters. There are already eight Mi-17 helicopters in Nepal. You also need the light helicopters, Dhruv advanced light helicopters or the Cheetahs to take relief material, uh, carry out reconnaissance missions, carry out a survey, also uh, airdrop medicines uh, to, to far away areas, to far flung higher reaches. Right. All of that, unfortunately, will be impacted. In fact, uh, Gaurav Sion with us, we are also getting these first visuals of uh, the rain there in Kathmandu. Of course, uh, this will create a lot of panic at already uh, the misery that the Nepal is going through. You can see this uh, heavy rain there uh, in Kathmandu and uh, uh, our thoughts and prayers with all those who will be spending the night out there uh, uh, in the open. Many houses have uh, been completely uh, destroyed, have completely been damaged uh, in, in this earthquake and now uh, this rain is only going to add to their misery. Gaurav, uh, uh, coming back to you very quickly, uh, this will also increase the danger of uh, avalanche in the, uh, the Mount, uh, Mount Everest region. Already uh, we have seen uh, two avalanche uh, striking the Mount Everest base camps, one and two, one yesterday, one today. How difficult it is going to be at uh, higher ups and areas, especially where the rescuers have not been able to reach? Well, uh, it just compounds the issue uh, at this point of time. Uh, you're absolutely right. Two tremors, two major tremors uh, after the uh, initial avalanche, and the, which led, which triggered a fresh avalanche, and this time at the base camp. Uh, what the Indian Army has so far been able to do is retrieve 61 people uh, alive, rescue right. 61 people and retrieve 19 bodies. But there are still several people, including one Indian who's, uh, who's at Camp 2, uh, which is even higher uh, than, than the base camp and Camp 1. Right. And the route from the base camp to Camp 2 has now uh, been uh, washed away, uh, you know, destroyed because of the avalanche. So that is where the big problem is. If right. it rains tomorrow, uh, one, rain leads to problem uh, to in rescue operations and two, uh, if there's another avalanche, rescuing more people will become all the more difficult and helicopter operations will unfortunately then come to a You know, Gaurav, rescue operations are on at multiple levels at war footing. One, what you were just talking about uh, is the Everest. But on the other hand, you know, with this rain, 
uh, that we are seeing right now in Kathmandu, if this intensifies, and you know, we are being told that it's accompanied by thunderstorming as well. What about places like Lamjang? What about places which are not near Kathmandu, where, you know, till now, the only pictures that have come are aerial sorties. So, you know, we can't even move to step two, where we can actually deliver relief or rescue. You're absolutely right. It is unsafe for people to return to their homes. Uh, uh, and in some uh, villages, village after village has been flattened. Uh, so uh, this will majorly compound the problem. Uh, what my sources in the Indian Air Force have been saying, whatever little window would be available, their first issue would be, their first concern would be to get tents to people, get water, food and medicines to people mm -hmm. as quickly as possible so that they can sustain themselves for the next 24 hours, next 48 hours, whenever they'll have to now start operating in very, very little windows uh, that, uh, you know, uh, that, the that the weather may be able to provide. So that is something that they would look forward to but in this weather they'll just have to uh, bunk down and wait till the weather improves land route uh, you know they'll, they'll start moving relief supplies as fast as possible despite the rain but rain would also mean uh, fr uh, not just an avalanche in the higher reaches but a landslide in the mountains and that once again would would be a double whammy absolutely in fact these uh, pictures that we are getting in uh, from uh, uh, Kathmandu, uh, Preeti, uh, you know, uh, as you can see, this right. is, oh, as Gaurav was also telling us, it is only going to compound the problem. Heavy rain, it's not uh, just a passing shower, it is a heavy rain. Thousands of people out there in the open already. The problem of uh, epidemic uh, might be on the, uh, on the rise, alarming situation there. Day two, already there are still debris to be cleared, there are still dead bodies to be taken out. And with this rain, the problem is only going to increase as far as so, Kathmandu is concerned. Right, you know, let's just take our viewers through the latest med department, and it doesn't look good. You know, we're just going through the figures here. It says for the next 48 hours, there's going to be heavy rain and thunderstorming. The Kathmandu air strip has been shut down. Uh, we have, nothing is landing or taking off anymore. We're going to try, you know, we're going to go to Gaurav and maybe he can give us more details whether or not the Indian Air Force has, you know, planes which can, li uh, can land at this point of time. Um, but uh, also taking our viewers through the latest death toll and once again, it's rising and the numbers we're only counting, the latest death toll, Ankit, is 2,352 and uh, those of injured is 6,239. And we're trying to cut across to our reporters in... Um, Nepal at this point of time. Very difficult. The network is down because of the bad weather. We can't reach them. So we're trying very hard to reach them as well. So they can give us the latest report. But Gaurav, you know, you've been speaking uh, to the MOD. You've been speaking to, you know, your sources within the Ministry of External Affairs. You know, with this inclement weather, and we can't emphasize enough because it's so important right now. These 48 hours are so important. Most of, you know, the data collection has happened through air surveillance. Uh, they haven't even moved to step two where you can look at rescue. Uh, do we have planes and the Indian Air Force is practically spearheading these operations? Do we have planes which can land in this kind of weather? Uh, that is a call that a pilot takes. Uh, uh in the afternoon when aircraft were going in to land, they were asked to come back uh, because there were tremors. So in tremors, it's not advisable to land at all. The ATC had to be evacuated. But yes, in rain, aircraft can land. It depends on the kind of, uh, you know, how how uh, intensive is the rain, uh, how much is it raining. So if it's raining a lot, perhaps not. But otherwise, these are military aircraft. These aircraft are meant to fly in difficult circumstances. We've got trained pilots. If you we were to talk about a C-130 Hercules or a C-17 Globemaster III, uh, these are aircraft that can land in a in a grassy patch it doesn't even require a full runway and they fly extremely low so even in uh, at this point of time uh, when that survey was being done on the Kathmandu Pokhara route these these aircraft came in very handy uh, that they're meant to fly below the radar so which is virtually treetop level so that came in very handy uh, but mm. once again the window it would depend uh, as, as one of the pilots was telling me yes. we get a window we will fly in Helicopters is a bigger issue. It's a different, uh, you know, uh, game there. Yeah. And to get the helicopters up, you need clearer weather. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, uh, Gaurav uh, and I, we were in Uttarakhand and uh, we witnessed how difficult it was uh, for uh, chopper pilots especially to take off uh, in bad weather. They were operating in very sh uh, short, uh, small windows. Thank you so much, Gaurav Savan, for bringing us up to date uh, with uh, the latest uh, there in uh, Nepal and the uh, situation. Uh, not looking very good with the weather deteriorating there. In fact, uh, Preeti, the latest that uh, we are right. now being told is that after the airport being shut down, two planes have been diverted back to Delhi, one right. to Delhi and one to Allahabad. Uh, well, that's the latest that is coming in.